This programme is an Orange Bag Media production. Welcome to Bologna. It's the seventh largest city in Italy, 388,000 inhabitants and about a million people living in the Bologna region. History here goes back to 500 BC. Visitors come for the Palazzo da Curzio and the monument to the fallen of the 8th of August 1848. That's the day that the citizens drove out the invading Austrian army. The city has also given its name to what is officially called Tagliatelle al Ragù. It's known across the world as Spaghetti Bolognese. We're here at the nearby town of Imola for the Hankook 12 Hours of Imola. We are in Italy in Imola at the Enzo Edino uh, Ferrari uh, circuit and we are here for the third round of the GT series. Drivers are happy to be here. We like to be here, so we've been last year in, in Imola and this year uh, Dubai of course and, uh, and Silverstone which was uh, not so fortunate for us unfortunately but it's great to be back here. Imola is a great track and uh, yeah, so we enjoy it very much. Christian Frankenhout is standing next to the Hoffer car bearing the text, just married. No, not me, not me. It's, it's Chantal, who's married. Chantal who's married. So, uh, but she got married last week and uh, yeah, that's why it's uh, just said, just married on the car. Yeah, I got married last Saturday and I changed my name. That's why there is a C Prince on the car now. So uh, you have to get, get used to it. <laughs> you would have expected her to be on her honeymoon. Um, I will be on the honeymoon next week, actually. So we delayed the honeymoon for Imola, but we won't uh, miss it next week. The day started with the qualifying session. The 24-hour series, each class have their own pole sitter. In the Porsche 991 class, it's Race Union that had the best time. It was not so easy. We are pushing. We have uh, two sets of tyre. But first, uh, we get a little bit in trouble regarding uh, the uh, Code 60 at the beginning. But with the second set of tyre, I did a quite a good, decent lap. and It was quite nice. It was P1 in our class. This is uh, the important thing. And now uh, we are looking forward to a long race. The Lamborghini number 77 of GTL Racing captured Paul in the SPX class. It's not bad, but uh, it's not important for 1-12 hours, especially because in my class I have a fixed lap time because I race in SPX class. So for the race is another question. Third in the A6 AM class, the number 33 of Car Collection Motorsport. Not an easy session for them. Qualifying was quite hard. I think it's the qualifying I've done the most lap ever. I was trying, trying, trying and pushing. And as I said, there was a lack of grip in the car, maybe due to the camber we, we were putting on. But we uh, work a lot on the race setup and uh, the car on race looks quite good. So we will see how is everything. Fastest overall, the number five Mercedes from Ram Racing. But the times were close, just a hundredth of a second apart. Uh, yes, so we have some consistency as well in the car. So uh, this is, you know, very important for endurance racing. So uh, it's lovely to be uh, sat right at the front on uh, on the pole position. But uh, we're confident we have a good race set up as well. Uh, this is really how you can uh, get to the end of the race on the podium. Lining up on the outside of the front row, the Hoffer Racing number one. We ended up P2, uh, just behind uh, the Rum Racing. I just couldn't get one, one clean lap from myself, so uh, it's, it's, it's down to the driver this time. Car was really good, um, but I just couldn't get the, the, the lap together. And, uh, but okay, yeah, it's, it's still a long race, so, but it will, it will go, come our way, I think. Offer Racing normally compete in the A6 AM class, but just as here at Imola last year, they've gone into A6 Pro. Our strategist, he uh, did all the calculation and he said we should try this way. Um, the other way wouldn't really work because uh, the new regulations on the M and the M Advantage and the Pro doesn't really um, count for us anymore. So uh, we try Pro again this year. It's a hot day. What do the teams expect? It's uh, like Dubai. It's 24 hours living in Dubai. It's uh, like Dubai because it's hot. The weather is good. 
is a 15 car, it's nice grid, it's a big car and it's okay, I hope no, no crash in, in, uh, in the start because, uh, you know, it's it easy. Well, uh, the car is really good and I hope uh, it will last in the heat because it's really, really, really hot. Um, Christian will go first, um, he will be fast as ever and uh, I will go second and I will give my best. Yeah, I think we're ready to go, uh, but no, we're good. I think the car is good. We have uh, good tyre life as well, so hopefully we can have a smooth uh, race. On the start grid, the race director reminds all the drivers about the starting procedure. Uh, for me, when I jump between a lot of different championships, each one has their own uh, slightly different regulations, so uh, it was good for the official just to come over and uh, just share his notes as well with me. So yeah, it's always nice to, uh, to have the support of, uh, of the team behind it. You know, it's really cool. Everyone has roughly the same expectations for the race. Yeah, for sure, P1 in our class. Um, it's uh, split, it, split it in two parts, so the first part is quite important that we get um, some distance to the second car, and this is the reason why we we'll, um, push from this beginning on. And let's see what happens. I don't know. I, don't, I know exactly tomorrow after 12 hours, honestly. We expect a very uh, exciting race. It's a race in, uh, in two days, the first day four hours and the second day eight hours. So the tactics will be very important. But not only the tactics, I think also the physics aspect will be very important with this, uh, with this hot weather here. We've completed two warm-up laps. The drivers know what's about to happen. For me, the start is one of the, the best things on the, on the whole race because you are full with power. You're waiting only for the lights. The lights are red, then the lights are going green and Everything is gone and that's nice, really nice, it's cool. Lights go out early, the car's only just coming through the last corner onto the main straight. At the front, the Hoffa number one gets ahead of the pole sitting number five from Ram Racing. Back down the field, there's plenty of battles too. The number one Mercedes, the first to get into the second corner, but goes a little wide. And the lead is taken back to the all red number five Ram Racing Mercedes. As the Hoffa car comes back onto the racing line, it's dangerously close to the number 15 Swiss team Mercedes. The 34 from Car Collection Motorsport started from the 13th position. It's an unlucky 13 for them. Dr. Johannes Kerkhoff spins off the track and now has a front row seat for the Touring Car Endurance Series, who have also started their race. A quick code 60, a welcome rest for some of the drivers. It's nice to have a bit of a breather. Uh, obviously, you're, you're really pumped and really excited, lots of adrenaline flowing. And then, uh, yeah, you have a bit of a code 60, it's nice to like, relax a little bit, have a bit of a breather and, uh, and gather your thoughts. As the code 60 is lifted, the number five still in the lead. A little early for anyone to use the code 60 for a pit stop. And as the race is back in full swing, it gives us a chance to look back at the start. Well, the start was perfect. Uh, we had some uh, two cars from the GT3, they didn't have a practice time and uh, they passed us. But it was fine, yeah. And uh, you know this uh, divided starting with two groups, uh, that was perfect. Uh, so we had no crashes in the first round and that was great. We're just a few laps in, but the GT Series cars are already overtaking the TCE Series entrance. Now we've really got a mixed field. The best way to have a win in a 12-hour race, don't have any issues. It's not the case for the 83 Porsche, Side Sports Palex limping home. We weren't doing too bad. We were, um, you know, we, we were up in front of the field. We were, I think, second in our class. We, we, we had a, a puncture early on, uh, I think due to a curb strike. So we rear right, so I managed to get back to the pits. Uh, we, we got it back in, got the wheel off, got a new one back on, checked for damage and we were OK. And uh, went back out again for, the, for my second part of the first in. Another puncture for the 83 Porsche. We were heading down the, down the start finish straight and at uh, about 165 miles an hour, the rear right tyre just let go. Uh, maybe a, a rogue bit of, a bit of carbon fibre, a bit of plastic from a car had come off and I'd collected it. Um, but yeah, you know, I'm massively gutted for the team. Uh, you know, they've all worked really hard and but, you know, for these guys in here, you know, uh, I haven't had time to be out yet. Getting the car back to the pits has caused a lot of damage and the car is withdrawn. The number 58, Mark Focus V8 from VDS Racing has also had some difficulties, but at least they could continue. Car spun in front of me, I break two halves, I spun two and went into the into the tire wall and car was damaged. So <laughs> after spinning on the first lap, the number 34 eventually returns to the pit lane. The Imola circuit is in the middle of town, and when a car is collected from the track, 
It's returned via the normal town roads, so the flatbed needs to negotiate town traffic before getting back to the pits. Saba Moore is enjoying his race, but not for long. It was a very good stint because we were leading all class. But uh, uh, the rear uh, right tyre exploded in the main straight at uh, 250 km per hour, and we are out. What are you thinking about when this happens? Just pushed the uh, maximum brake, of course, and uh, I see the car going to the right direction. Uh, I see the side of the track, and uh, I concentrate to uh, survive to the gravel, and uh, I know the race is over for us. Two hours in, here's the standings. A6 teams currently hold the top positions in the overall standings. The number 15 from Swiss team have a 14 second lead on SPS Automotive Performance number 60. The regulations give the AMs a little more fuel, therefore they need fewer pit stops. On the lead lap in third place, the number 5 from Ram Racing in SPX. The GTL Racing number 77 leads by an impressive three laps after the first two hours. Speed Lover number 78 is second and the 83 Slide Sport Palex car is third. The 991 category is one of the most competitive classes. The 187 Race Union team have a lap over the 64 of Porsche Laureate Racing in second. The number 73 from EB Motors is only 46 seconds back in third. This is Endurance. I think the good thing about Endurance is that uh, you, get a, you get a second chance, you know, so it's not just a quick thing, it's something you need to commit to, it's something which is uh, for body and for your mind um, a challenge. Um, it's, um, yeah, it's a fantastic event and the drivers respect each other, so it's, um, yeah, this is uh, Imola, 12 hours of Imola, very nice. The 24-hour series powered by Hankook is organised by Creventic and they like to pick tracks that fires the imagination of the drivers. That's why we're at Imola. Yes, I think uh, the Imola circuit is another legendary circuit in our series. Um, it hosted the Formula One races till 2006 and of course the circuit is also very famous uh, because of the tragical uh, accidents of Arta Senna in uh, 1994. But uh, yeah, it's a really challenging circuit. I think the, the drivers love the circuit. I like Imola very much. The last year uh, we were uh, in our category in Pro the first. Uh, overall second, so I like it very much. I like it. I drove three races in the last 12 months here um, and it's always always nice to come back here to Imola. Um, very technical, yeah. I would not say it's my favorite tra track, but it's in the top three of my of my favorite tracks. Be, Imola is a special circuit. Now it's completely different to many, many here because they have changed a lot the, the design, but in any case it's an adrenaline circuit. There's a good reason the drivers like this track. Oh, we have a really special symmetry. This, uh, uh, this, this track uh, is inside the park with uh, uh, all the green area. The environment here is very important. And uh, also this, this track is, is famous for his, his history. You know that the track is in on, behalf, uh, on the name of the Alpha of Mr. Enzo Ferrari. And uh, people inside the track uh, are passionate about about motorsports so uh, the, the, the feeling that you can find here i think is unique it's a fast circuit but also a very tight high speed corners um, especially here the straight it's a real real uh, speed straight um, a very challenging is and the only problem here is with 50 cars here in this field today the the, the track is quite tight so it's quite narrow it's, it's quite difficult to take over and uh, Sometimes you have situations where you have five, six cars uh, in one block and it's uh, quite dangerous. And, uh, but uh, besides that, uh, it's, it's a great track. We love it. Yeah, you have no time to be a little bit comfortable in the car. Only here on the short uh, uh, straight here, that's, that's all. Uh, so it's very, very hard to drive, uh, but it's fun. A cloud of dust at the Aqua Minerali corner. It's the number 11 of the Bohemia Energy Racing Team. And they are limping now back to the pit lane. In uh, second chicane, I was a uh, little bit too much pushing and I went out into the gravel. And with the left side of the car, I went into the barrier. The team immediately preparing to start repairs on the car. SPS Automotive Performance number 16 had to deal with issues before the race even started. 
You already yesterday evening had the broken engine. The team worked the whole night. They started this morning four o'clock. A new engine has been brought from AMG from Germany last night, and uh, we didn't uh, do the qualifying this uh, day, this time. So we started at the uh, latest, at last from the from P, I think it was 18 or something, 18 or 28 even. I don't remember. And Lance, our core driver, he made a great job. He brought the car up to the to the third place. And I took over on P3 and drove the car until P1 even. And uh, then uh, something broke in the front left. And the team need to retire. Because the piece is broken straight from the chassis. It's not the piece itself that broke, but the, the, the connection to the chassis is broken. You can't repair it. Now in the lead, the five Mercedes from Ram Racing. It's not a big lead though, and they can't hold on to it when Ramon loses the car. I pushed too hard, I lost it, and um, yeah, I couldn't keep it on the track here the last uh, turn. That was it. It, it, it obviously, uh, during the afternoon, it gets more slippery, people get off the track, it's more dusty, and the tires are not, uh, uh, they're great, but then obviously if you, if you have them on the car for, for a longer time, then um, yeah, so that, that's why I lost it. But it's not long before they're back at the head of the field. The Bohemia Ferrari back on track. Uh, we lost at 12 laps. And uh, I damaged a front uh, wheel, so the guys were quite quickly with the repairing. Now we are a little bit behind the leader. It will be hard for them to make up those 12 laps during the race. Now in the number five Mercedes from Ram Racing, Tom Onslow Cole is driving. In his stint, he had to take a 48-time penalty, which was incurred by his teammate. Yeah, it was a 38 seconds uh, penalty uh, for speeding in the pit lane. Um, yeah, it was too late with the, the limiter and uh, we're just a bit above the uh, 40 kilometers per hour. And um, yeah, so we, uh, that was 38 seconds, which was uh, my penalty. We got a 10 second penalty for unsafe release, which we, we accidentally hit a tire when, when driving out of the pit. Technical difficulties earlier for the number one Hoffa car means not all their drivers will be out on track in the first part of the race. Uh, I plan to drive tomorrow, so we have our two hours break by, with our repair, so I couldn't go today. I will go tomorrow, I think, second stint. Hendrik still loves driving the Allied Racing Porsche number 93. Yeah, I mean, the cup car is a, cup Porsche is a, is a car where you really have to work. Uh, you, you have a lot of, of uh, engine power, not that much downforce, and it's, it's really fun, it's really work in the car, and I like it. Uh, not so much help, just ABS, no traction control, and I like to drive, uh, to drive a car like this for, for our endurance race. Just before the end of this first part of the race, Ramon Voss sees his car back in the lead as the number 11 takes a late pit stop. We would like to have a full tank and new tires for the tomorrow's stint in, um, the, for the start. So we do it like now. We will not change the driver. We have the same strategy in Navarra, and we start with the full tank and with the new tires, uh, the other not. And we were quite quickly in front, so we would like to repeat the strategy. The checkered flag is out, which pauses the race, ready to continue for the next day. The cars will go into Park Fermi, and we'll look at the standings. A6 Pro Cars for the top three this time. Ram Racing lead with their number five Mercedes. From the Porsche Racing Porsche, number 29 second. The top three completed with another Porsche, the number 911 from Herbeth Motorsport. In A6 Am, Swiss team number 15 Mercedes has a full lap lead over their nearest competitors in the number 85 Pro Sport Performance Mercedes. The 33 Audi R8 LMS of car collection, third in the class. The two entrants in the GT4 category are three laps apart. The 254 of QSR Racing leading with just two pit stops. The 263 of Allied Racing has taken six visits to the pit lane up to now. We just finished the first four hours on Friday. The cars are on uh, Park for May up the, at the moment, but tomorrow morning they will be back on the start grid, of course, in the same position as they ended uh, the first day. And we are very, very, very exciting for the, for the rest of the race. Saturday morning, the support races have finished and the grid is reconvened on the main straight. A grid walk in the Italian sunshine, the drivers mentally preparing themselves. Yeah, this is one the, the, the second part of the, uh, of the race. So, like you can see, it's uh, very hot. So we provide uh, from the, the sun, 
it's uh, and uh, to prepare psych psycho psychologically uh, to the race. The drivers will continue where the race left off yesterday. Um, yeah, we had a really good race yesterday. We gained a lot of positions, had some bad luck in quali. So uh, yeah, we're doing a good job so far. Uh, still eight hours to go, so it's going to be a really long race. So a lot of things can happen, but uh, we will do the best possible job. It's going to be hot, it's going to be hard. Uh, we've got eight hours to go, it's a long time. So uh, yeah, we'll see what happens, but uh, hopefully we can finish in the same place. In my opinion, the car was quite okay, but maybe uh, the speed of other cars were better than us. Here on this track, the, the Mercedes and the Porsche, they sweep really good. And for us, we were having a little bit uh, lack of uh, grip on qualifying. Then on race, because of the, the class we are, and uh, in the A6 AM advantage, I can do maximum three hours, so we decided to save my driving time for today. Now we are safely in P3 in class, and uh, if nothing happens, we will finish on this position, so let's drive and have fun. I think it's going to be an exciting start. Everybody knows how it works now. Uh, I hope there is not a code 60 direct after the start, but uh, the, the races are very fine and uh, the, the leaders in the last lap uh, uh, were, were the same. So I think it's going to be a thrilling race. Warm-up laps are underway. Ram Racing will start from first position with the 29 Porsche, Porsche next to them. And next to uh, Mercedes, uh, actually, and uh, uh, we saw yesterday the car is very fast, it's a good driver in. Uh, it's not important to, to fight with him today uh, in the first laps. Um, how I said, the race is long, eight hours. We have to do some brake changes like other teams, and I think this is the key fact of the race today. And yeah, we're on the leading lap, we, stay, uh, to, we try to stay on the lap, and let's see what we can do. The GT cars are ready to battle again for the second part of the Hankook 12 hours of Imola, part of the FIA Sanctions 24-hour GT Endurance Championship. The front row can see the start line, and the final eight hours are about to start. It's the usual rush towards the first corner. Good start from the green number 15, but then it falls back to the fourth place from which it started. Start was quite hard. Uh, a lot of pro cross in front of me, so as I saw that the, I think one of the Porsche was not so good on the on the on the start and i was trying to to pass him outside but another porsche on the left side was also a good starter and then i i break a bit before to don't crash a great start for the white herbeth motorsport number 911 and goes into turn two in second position having started from third all the drivers keeping their wits about them a good clean start and a good first lap but there's a problem for the 11 Ferrari. Remember, they took a late pit stop yesterday to start this morning with a full fuel tank, and they're being pushed into the pit garage. Some teams had planned an early pit stop for today. After two turns, I must uh, come to a penalty from uh, yesterday uh, because we we take um, in the, the petrol, uh, it costs 60. We take pet, uh, too much petrol. So that's why we have a penalty. The 29 of Porsche Racing and the 15 from Swiss team have been battling it out on track. Well, honestly, I, I don't saw him in the mirror, but some corners before he pushed me a bit wide and then I don't saw him on, on the right side, so yeah. The team have brought the 29 Porsche in to get the grass out of the grill. That stops the airflow and could make the engine overheat if it wasn't removed. A little further off the racing line, David Abramchik as we look at the replay, clear that the 75 Porsche coming out of Rivazza loses grip. Race Union number 187 is in the pit garage with drive shaft issues. The 94 having problems with track limits. In the turn seven, I go to uh, I turtle too uh, too quickly. That's why the, I lose the car. But uh, I control immediately. I say uh, 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 I don't move uh, too too much. Like, I say like this. And uh, no turtle, no brake, and the car, uh, after, uh, after uh, I can restart with the car, and the car uh, have no problem. That spin puts the Belgian team down to seventh in the 991 class. In SPX, Dominic Bastien is working hard to gain positions in the Speed Lover 78 Porsche. He is even having a good battle with the number five Mercedes AMG from the A6 Pro class. At the front of the field, we have a new leader, the number 911 Porsche from Herbert Motorsport. Getting towards halfway, no guarantees just yet. 
Yeah, it seems to be a, to be a good race so far for us. Um, we are leading now, but it's really close to the two Mercedes and also the third Porsche. It's a, it's a tough race, very hot. Um, yeah, we have to keep fighting for a good result and yeah, hopefully it works out. Uh, with Motorsport 911 in the lead after six hours, there are laps between each of the top three overall. The number 17 Edex Sport Racing Mercedes in second, and the number 29 Porsche Racing Porsche third overall. The top three overall are A6 Pro cars, so that class mirrors the overall positions. The other A6 Pro contenders are the earlier race leader Ram Racing number five in fourth, the number 11 from Bohemia Energy Racing in fifth, the Hoffer number one Mercedes in sixth. In SPX, the GDL 77 Lamborghini has a six lap lead over the 78 speed lover Porsche in second. And third, with a 56 lap deficit, the number 58 Mark Focus from VDS Racing Adventures. This is Endurance. Two sponsors uh, are here and support me. And uh, yeah, uh, that's uh, racing, not, not uh, of the racetrack, is, is uh, really good, but promotion is uh, really good and that's racing, yeah. The Autodromo Enzo Edino Ferrari is host to the Hankook 12 Hours of Imola. We've just started the seventh hour of racing, and one of the variables to take into account is the weather. Really, really hot. It's now coming the hottest uh, uh, hours to, to drive. Yeah, it's really hot. Uh, I have uh, some uh, liquid ice, put it on the, the body. It's good. Takes a little bit fresh. Not just the ice helping the drivers to conquer the heat. Training is another option. Uh, it was quite hot, but uh, that's what we are used to. That's, uh, we also train it, and uh, me especially, I train it in the winter. I go to the sauna in, uh, with a suit to, uh, to train a little bit, and yeah, that's uh, doing racing. Series sponsors Speedcom Communications have introduced another option to keep a cool head behind the wheel. This is the world's first water-cooled helmet, um, which works with a cool shirt, so we have like an like a underfloor heating, but with tubes in the helmet, so the driver can attach to a water cooling system, which obviously cools their head. So it's the, it's the first of its kind. We launched in October last year in Europe. It's already been going three years in America successfully. The helmet doesn't just contain the cooling system. Rooks have a sort of a, a catchphrase, ready to race. So we have, as you see here, you have all the built-in communications, the speakers, the microphone, uh, the drinks unit, and the comms is all in one, one link. Uh, and on, on the other side of the helmet, we have a similar link, which simply just would then link up to this cooling system. The system itself obviously has to be attached to the car as well. Um, but for the amount of safety and the amount of um, benefits that cooling the head provides, it isn't much of a hassle to fit our system. There are already drivers in the 24-hour series using these helmets, but Matthew hopes it soon will become even more. Fingers crossed in, I don't know, maybe two or three years, the whole grid will be in Rooks's. That's my dream. Back in the race, Raman Voss going out of his way to show what an exciting race it still is. Yeah, I was uh, chasing another uh, AMG, and I think I was just too close to it, so I couldn't really see the corner well. So I, yeah, I, I took the corner um, in a bad way, so then, uh, then the car got upset. Uh, yeah, and, uh, and I spun, so that um, needs to keep more distance, I think, for um, lessons learned. Yeah. The 24-hour series is in its 14th year, and this is the second time running here at Imola. It's a truly mixed grid, with GT cars and the TCE Championship race going on at the same time. And dealing with the different classes determines how you drive. Off the track, is uh, really tricky with uh, slow cars, but uh, many, many GT3 cars. Uh, but we uh, are in the middle field, and yeah, it's... It's good. As we head to the hottest part of the day, drivers start making mistakes. Not all of them heat related. A code 60 is called so the marshals can clean the track. Some drivers not keeping an eye out for the flags at the marshals post and keep on racing and overtaking. It should be 60 kilometers an hour and no overtaking. That will earn them a long penalty. Once all cars are at reduced speed, the marshals get to work quickly to remove the debris and to get rid of the engine fluids on track.
Back to green flag racing in the series that allows up to five drivers in a car. The minimum amount, two per car. And incredibly, some teams have taken on that challenge 12 hours with just two drivers. Last year we've been here as well at Imola, uh, Tom and I, and that was very good. We did it together last year and we, I think we, we finished uh, third and second in class. Um, and um, yeah, it's, it's doable. We, yeah, it's good. I mean, uh, the Ram racing team, they look after us. There's good food and there is all things which, which you need. So try to keep you fit. And um, yeah, last year was, was, was good. And so far this year is good as well. Um, for me, it's um, very nice because I get a lot of driving time. So uh, yeah, I, I, I enjoy it. Another two-man team, Benoit and Bruno Flatter. Something's come loose from the left rear, maybe the wheel arch lining. But when the car comes to the pits, the mechanics focus on changing the brake pads that were causing issues. And they see no reason to investigate the gravel-filled back wheel any further. New to the series are the Russian drivers who've joined Team Speed Lover in the number 88 Porsche. Yes, I really enjoy it. First of all, maybe in first part of training, testing, I may be quite afraid, but step by step I go faster, 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 and uh, I am really happy what my speed has go up, and uh, now as com comfortable for me car, and uh, all people, all racing is very uh, understandable for me. It's very nice and very interesting. When drivers are already looking forward to the finish of the race this early, you know it's been a tough one. Yeah, it was really, really hot and really, really tricky. Uh, many code 60, uh, yeah. This was uh, really, really fun, uh, but uh, we're standing off position two and the finishes uh, from the team uh, position uh, one. But uh, maybe we we have a long uh, race distance and yeah. Looking for the for the end of the race. With still four more hours to the checkered flag, let's take a look at the standings after eight. The top three all have a lap between them, just as two hours ago, but it's not the same cars. Ram Racing number five was sixth overall two hours ago, now leading. Former race leader number 911 Porsche now second, and the 85 of Pro Sport Performance has gone from fifth to third. With that improvement, the 85 has taken over the lead in the A6 AM class and has a lap now on the number 15 Mercedes of Swiss team in second. Our collection Audi has four more hours to try and make up the five laps it's behind. In the 991 class, the Italian EB Motors number 73 has just 52 seconds to the number 56 from Dutch team Van Berlo Racing. The French Porsche Lorient team are two laps further back. The Creventing 24-hour series is often characterised as being one big family. And of course, within most teams, there's a family atmosphere too. But here in Italy, there are some entries who have blood family in them. Driving with your father is, uh, is really special. Uh, doing driving together, teamwork together. Yeah, it's really cool. Nice experience. I drive with my father. He's very good. I like it. Uh, I drive with my, my father for far, far away we go. And... Uh, I, I love this, this is the dream, sex. You often hear people saying that they catch the racing bug. With fathers racing together with their children, maybe it's better described as an hereditary disease. When Chanta was a small kid, she always loved to come with me. And after, I think, six years, we decided she could try it too. And she was very fast. So that's how she came to the racing. <clears throat> then uh, one year later, my brother saw what we did. What we did. And he tried it again, and he tried it also. So the family grew. Now Shanta got married, and her husband is a very fast driver too. So next year he will be in our GT3 car. He did a lot of laps with the SLS. He was even faster than us, so it will be a bigger family in the car. Driving with your twin brother gives you an advantage during racing. Yeah, I like it, um, especially when, when he gets out of the car, I get in. We don't have to change many things on the belts because we have the same size, we have the same weight, everything is the same, so yeah, it's really cool. But one thing for sure, driving with your own family changes the team dynamic. It's different because you can, you can participate in uh, something that you like so much, uh, like uh, racing cars, uh, and you can, uh, you can split with all the family, so we can stay all together in, in our really passion. But of course, 
your whole team is your track family. For sure, it's a little bit more familiar, uh, but also the team mechanics. Uh, we are a small team with, um, yeah, I know all the guys really good, so really enjoy it. The, the team, the mechanics, it's, it's just like family. We are we having parties together, they were at the wedding. So it's, uh, I think it's easier for us because it's, it's family, it's not only business. There's not so much pressure. Nobody gets uh, beaten up if he makes a mistake or something. So it's, I think it's easier for us. Look on the right side of the picture here in the shadow of the trees, the 88 spinning just before we looked at the standings. This same car was spinning on the track. That was a driver error. This time, a different cause. Uh, happened because uh, the tires is uh, broken. It's uh, bro burst on the straight, and the uh, car is gone. And I'm happy what is on my way, not wall. And I am happy what is I go out. The team have decided not to repair the damage. It takes so much time, so it's unable to produce it. And Porsche Motorsport having such parts here, so it's unable to complete. As the teams and drivers have told us, the code 60 can be a bit of a breather. But you have to keep your focus on what you're doing. You quite see what happened with Ali Kapan in the car collection number 33. The teammate from the 34 car did. Uh, I was just behind my sister car. And Ali take out the, the, the radio and the drinking system and was not looking in the front and he was driving directly in the middle of the pit lane and in the racetrack. He bumps in and the car was coming back and I have to, to fight to come around him so that I didn't come in touch with him. So he get out of the car and leave directly the race court. <laughs> Problems can happen from other people's errors. So uh, in turn nine, there was a Porsche that wanted to pass me. So I went on the outside of the turn, but he missed his braking, he hit the curb and uh, he took me out. He went to the right and uh, he hit me and I went into the gravel and uh, we hit the steering bar. So the steering bar was broken and we didn't have the piece with us. So we had to go find one in the pits. So we lost a lot of time with the repairs. Getting the car in proved troublesome to the team and led to another incident. The direction is broke and I need to to directly the, the tire and I put my hand on the caliper. But now everything is okay, the bone is okay, only the tendon broke and the doctor, the doctor reconstruction all the tendon and I'm happy because the car is in the race now, but I have my finger here, and yeah, but it's okay. In true endurance racing spirit, it's the car that gets first attention. For Portimao, I think that I can work a little bit, but I can work. Drama as smoke is coming from the right rear of the car collection number 34. It was uh, for a second uh, by the heat. Not really concentrated, and I lost the car in the uh, last corner to the uh, starting grid. Yeah, we are, it's a wall, yeah. So, and uh, the right front wheel was not steering, so I have to go, go slowly back and come in to repair it. Code 60. This might have been a good opportunity for the Van Berlo Racing number 56. They've been having brake issues, but someone else had even more braking trouble. I had to uh, slow down for code 60 and I think it was the golf, he didn't see me and hit me full on the left side. So uh, yeah, the, total, uh, the car was totally broken, yeah, I left the door, we can't fix it but I think we lost 8, eight uh, rounds. But uh, yeah, we're still uh, on the track and we're, we're driving on the third position, my son is finishing so I hope we will uh, keep this uh, place till the end. It's 30 degrees in the shade. The track itself well over 40 degrees Celsius and inside the car the temperatures are even higher. Now you really get used to it, you have to train it and then you can do it and uh, my stint only was uh, I think 65-70 minutes. Uh, we had a little bit code 60 so I had really time to recover between the uh, with the, uh, the fastest laps and yeah, you get used to it and uh, the, the cup car has, a, has an airflow that means that you have almost 60 degrees inside and that's still okay. Yeah. Even then, things don't go the way you want. Uh, it's really a shame because the, the, uh, the team did a great job and I really have to apologize for, for all the mechanics because that was clearly my fault because I lost concentration and uh, they did a really good job uh, 
everything worked so far, although it's our first endurance and uh, the pace of the drivers was really good. The, uh, the car worked very well and in the end uh, one driver, in this case me, has thrown away the result. Yeah. Let's have a look at how this has affected the standings. Two hours to go and Herbert Motorsport number 911 Porsche is back at the top of the timing screen. Ram Racing number five now second and the Pro Sport Performance 85 in third, but only just 17 seconds between them and fourth place. A combined look at the SPX and GT4 classes shows the GDL Lamborghini with a six lap lead over the 78 Speed Lover car. And in GT4, the Allied 263 has 19 laps over the QSR racing skill number 254. In A6 Pro, first and second are the 911 and the 5, same as the overall positions. The E-Deck number 17 is third, Porsche Racing number 25, fourth, and they're on the same lap. This is endurance. Endurance is uh, a little bit crazy. In the beginning you have luck, like today, code 60, then you're on P1. Ten minutes later you have bad luck, yeah, you are now three laps behind or four laps. And endurance is exactly, you cannot calculate the race. One incident and the whole tactic is gone and you have to restart planning your race. In racing, of course, most attention goes to the drivers. Here in the 24-hour GT Endurance Series, though, there are equally important people behind the scenes. So we are with, uh, with two cars. We have... Uh Two engineers for each car. We have five five people on working on the car. On each car, we have some people cooking. We have uh, two people who stay all day uh, at the gas station. Because if there is a code 60 and we have to come in directly, they are they need to be there. This race series always has a special Panda fuel station, refueling there instead of in front of the pit garage. There's a safety dividend for everyone in the pit lane, and it makes it cheaper for the teams who don't need a refueling rig. It also makes it very easy for the organisers to check if fueling rules are being adhered to. I'm myself and my team are checking if the drivers uh, are replying to the amount of fuel they are allowed to uh, take, if they are allowed to uh, 100 litres, if they do tank 100 litres. The fuel pumps work with badges preset to the maximum amount of fuel each car is allowed per stop. And those doing the fueling have to make sure they use the correct badge for each car, especially during a code 60, when only half the full amount is allowed. They got two badges, they got the green one and the purple one. Uh, sometimes there are teams that use the wrong badge and then they get a penalty from the race director. Working in the fuel station during the race means that you do miss the action on the track. Yes, it's uh, very different from uh, being in a, a marshal around uh, the track here at the fuel station. But it's um, especially during the Code 60, we've got a lot of work to do and it's, yeah, it's fun. The technicians in the fuel station miss most of the action too. So why do it? Why I do it? I love motorsport. It's my life. It's my second job. It's, in, in main job, I'm a mechanic in uh, pit stop. I have pit stop. The dynamics of the race are ever-changing, and that's why team members have to be ready to go at any time. And they use the fuel stop for an additional check of the car. We're looking sometimes at some, some, uh, something damaged on the car, or you have the radiators for the cooling, and uh, when you have um, pickup in, the, in front of the car, there comes no, uh, no wind in and you have no cooling. The gearbox or the, 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 the motor warmed up, and so we look around the car. And when we see something, we can uh, f um, f radio to the box and say, please repair, please fix it, uh, make it Z or whatever. The Ram Racing team is a doughty competitor in this series. They're running second now and their sights still set on first place. But this team isn't a permanent fixture in the series. Last year was our first year, really. Um, so this year, again, is for us a test year. We like to learn things. Um, so we, we like this track, so we came back um, therefore, and, uh, but we're also going to be in Barcelona, um, so we, we will do more, more races this season and uh, you never know, maybe we can do the full season uh, with Creventec next year. And for sure Dubai, of course, we're looking forward to Dubai in uh, January 2019. There are more who don't intend this race to be a one-off. No, no, we do a couple of races this year. We planned, uh, we do the 12 hours of Spa at the end of the year and uh, maybe another, but it depends off we have time for it. 
Some teams are a professional crew who've been together for a long time. Others, a group of enthusiasts who are always open to new additions. Belgian team speed lover has a new communication officer who at the moment is keeping a close eye to see if a code 60 will be called. I started off as an intern with uh, speed lover. Um, I did these things sometimes but never alone, so I was always with my mentor. Um, but this time um, I'm doing this alone. My mentor is here still for any case, but um, yeah, everything went fine so far, so it's good. Rob is also responsible for team tactics. Well, I'm not alone. First of all, so we're always with more people to decide some things. Um, but obviously, what we're going to do when it is a code 60, will we change drivers, will we go for fuel, um, tell the drivers what they have to do if there's something happens. Of course, a code 60 can happen at any time. It's, yeah, sometimes a... Uh, yeah. Number 187 from Race Union, slow on track. Their earlier problem has returned. Another broken drive shaft. I'm pushing quite a lot to gain some uh, position and uh, suddenly the car are at no power anymore. You, lo you lost the drive and then uh, I was in the Aqua Minerale and just then was just rolling uh, to the pit to try to fix the problem. But uh, it's quite, quite easy to explain. Uh, suddenly you have no uh, power anymore and no drive and then you're just rolling to the pit. It's endurance, yeah? just endurance. Regulations state that the drivers can only be behind the wheel for a maximum of two hours. We're now within the last two hours of the race, so teams can use the code 60 to change drivers, serve any penalties they've amassed, and fuel the cars with 50% of their allowance to try and make this their final pit stop of the race. During a code 60, this will cost you far less time than if we were under green flag conditions. There's a huge scrap for third position overall. Porsche Racing Porsche number 29 is in third for now. On its tail, the 17 Mercedes of Edex Sport Racing. The live streaming images mean those at the track don't have to miss a second of the battle. It is a battle for the third place. It's very hot and uh, I have no word for this. Just I see. <laughs> Less than an hour to go, and the 17 takes over third position. For the second time in a short time, the 73 EB Motors Porsches is in the pits. Uh, we have some problem. We, we passed uh, 11 hours without any any mistake, any any problems, and now we have two problems. One was uh, was passed because we, we resolved it, and now a tire that uh, is destroyed. So we change, uh, and we hope it uh, was uh, the, the last problem. A new tyre for the Porsche 73 and it's back on track quickly. They're not the last to suffer difficulties. The Porsche in fourth position runs into the gravel but can continue. The car running second overall. Number five from Ram Racing, slowing down on the track and the team don't know why. Uh, we don't really know. Looks like we've had contact with something or someone. We don't know exactly what yet. The driver of the Mercedes number five, Ramon Voss, is getting out of the car and the team's still in the dark about what's costing them their podium position. Uh, his radio stopped working, so he's out of the car, he's fine, but we don't know what's happened. The 34th Car Collection Motorsport is third in A6M. They've really enjoyed racing here, and especially all the overtaking, passing and battling with their competitors. The guys uh, learn to, to take over and leave take over. You know the places where you can take over, and uh, the driving was very fair. And, and I think it was all only a good race. Everybody has to fight with the heat. We are now third in the in the class. And with all this shit which we have had, it's a good result. Force Racing don't give up and tries to get one lap back going into the last lap of the race. Endurance racing, that's exciting right to the end. A brilliant weekend in Italy, which has given us fantastic racing. And congratulations to Robert Renard and the Herbert Motorsport 911 Porsche, who takes the check and flag to win the Hankook 12 Hours of Imola. 12 hours of racing means exhausted drivers. Perfect, perfect but difficult. Uh, I push until the checkered flag, and it's a real podium at the General Championship. In the car, uh, I don't have uh, water and uh, and the air conditioning uh, didn't work, so it, it was very difficult for me, but podium, perfect.
preventing the series organisers. Very happy with how this event has gone. Ah, I think it was an exciting uh, race. I think tough. The drivers were every uh, body, and a lot of uh, uh, things happened uh, uh, on the on the track. I think it was a tough race, but uh, the first reactions from the drivers are excellent and uh, amazing uh, track and amazing uh, race. For the second year running, this Imola race has been very successful. It's also a proud day for the Imola Autodromo. This year, the, the race was great, and so I hope that everybody have fun here and uh, also the taste of our food is good <laughs> you know and uh, the weather uh, was very good and so that's another very important thing for the race uh, i hope that also next year you will come back and uh, that's my that's my hope it is not to win but to compete well, that's the saying anyway let's have a look at the standings and the final results Two Porsches and a Mercedes in the top three, and it's the 911 of Herbert Motorsport on the top step. Two laps back in second, the number 17 of EDEC. Jelko Drimic stopping a lap early has pushed the gap down to third and Porsche Racing to three minutes, 46 seconds. Each class has their own race winner who gets full points for the European Championship. In the A6 Pro, obviously, that's the 911 of Herbert Motorsport. EDEC 17 second and Porsche number 29 third. In A6 Am, the winner, the 85 of Pro Sport Performance. Swiss Team 85 second, Car Collection 34 third. In SPX, the 77 Lamborghini of GDL Racing is victorious. Speed Lover 78 second, CDS number 58 third. Porsche 991 Cup Class, EB Motors number 73 wins by a lap. Porsche Lorenz 64 second, Van Berlo number 56 in third. In GT4, it's a clear win for Allied Racing number 63 with their Porsche Cayman. QSR Racing Skill 254 in second. The next race will be in Portugal uh, in the beginning of July, the first weekend of July from the, the 6th, 7th and 8th of July. And we have there the GT Series, the TCE Series and also the Proto Series. This will be a special event as the race doesn't just count for the European Championship, but it's the second round of the Championship of Continents. That finishes at the end of the year on the quarter track in Austin, USA. After a blisteringly hot weekend in Italy, the drivers, technicians, mechanics and engineers can cool down just a little bit now as they prepare for the next race in Portugal. After this third race out of six, the European Championship standings are beginning to shape up. But with the first three cars within just a point of each other, we're not writing any headlines yet. We'll be back with the next race from Portugal, or you could be there as a spectator or a competitor. For more information, go to 24hgtseries.com.